I think you begin by writing what you know about. I, that's a general rule of writing, especially in fan fiction. The exciting thing about fan fiction is that you bring to a familiar world things that only you know. That's why it's so fun and why so many <coughs> worlds can exist in people's heads at the same time, because it makes sense. You can divide things up like that. You can live in this familiar canon base and then have all of these tangents from all these very unique imaginations. It's a lot of fun. And so of course you start with things that you are interested in, and of course you start with things that you love and that you can be really passionate about and present these new experiences to, to readers that, that they've never seen before. That's, what's, that's what writing is, is taking people to new worlds and new lives. And so you start there, and then a couple of them are going to resonate, like I said, and a couple of them are going to gain some sort of following. And that's, I think that's when you start that balance between writing for yourself and writing for an audience. I don't think you should ever compromise what you believe and what you feel should happen to the story because of an audience, but especially in fan fiction, the relationship between the writer and the audience is the most fun. It's so reciprocal, it's so immediate. You get feedback and you can reference your own readers in the next chapter and create these really fun experiences that isn't available in commercial writing. So that's, that was one of the draws to fan fiction for me in the first place. So I think it's very important to always keep your audience in mind. But never be afraid to write something that's just for you. Sometimes those are the ones that change your life. I mean, I have seen people say before, say that your job as a writer is to write just what the people want, and that's not true. You gotta write for yourself, even if it's a mix. But uh, something uh, Penn said, and then you referenced it, was with uh, the knowledge thing. But I, here's something, you know, oftentimes we'll write ourselves in spots where we don't have knowledge on a topic. I mean, what do you guys do when you do that? Research. Call an editor. Research. Yeah. Call an editor. Wing the heck out of it. And sometimes I find I'm right anyway. How <laughs> humble. Yeah. But I would also uh, agree with uh, research. Um, I've learned so much writing about ponies. <laughs> Uh, just, yeah, random little facts you come across and you think, hey, I want to put that in the story, that's really interesting, things like that. Like, um, something I learned that I had to research for a story was, what order do your senses develop in? Yeah. When oh. you're, <laughs> wow, <when>. me too. <laughs> so funny. So. And it's not the order you think. <laughs> can, you, can you expand upon that order? No, I'm curious. Does, does anybody yeah. know the first one? Well, um, I ha I'd have to double check because I don't remember it, but um, I used it for the one shot uh, first hours. The that first was with one the... is your anus. <laughs> what? That's not a sense. That's not a sense. <laughs> that's a, that's a, so I mean, with some people it might be, but. No, that's, a, <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what he's talking about, but like there's an order where like you're, you find the most pleasure in your body. And Wait, first, are you talking about anus. Freud's different stages of development? Yeah, it's oh, he's talking about, he's talking about like the five senses, oh, those like touch, yeah. yeah, touch, <laughs> hearing. Yeah, you keep talking about like, the anal stage, Boy, the is, oral that stage. That is a mixture there we just got. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, think, I think they go right along with each other. <laughs> but, 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 we gotta be careful with all the different stories. But anus is not a sense. With, with, with research there, I mean, how deep do you guys go? Because, I mean, I know I will throw myself, I will sit down, I spent, uh, with uh, Beyond the Borderlands, for example, I suddenly realized I don't have a monetary system for the Griffin Empire. And I spent the next, like, hour researching monetary systems, denominations of money, and building three separate nations' denominations of money solely so that the story could stay consistent and accurate with it. And that's because I'm from the Brandon Sanderson School of World Building where I'm going to write a book that's longer than the book you'll ever actually read and you'll never get to see it. It's me. All my little secrets and you can't have it. Um, what do you guys do? I mean, like, because everyone's got a different process. Like as far as research goes? Research, yeah. Research, creating your stuff, kind of blends. Uh, the Wikipedia wormhole. <laughs> <laughs> Google wormhole is also very nice. Oh, I am on so many homeland Well, no, it, it's worse because the Google wormhole leads to the Wikipedia wormhole and several other wormholes. Sometimes. TV yes. tropes. Yeah. Yes. 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 Google is the gateway curve wormhole. <laughs> <laughs> so to navigate is you go to whole sites. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. 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 Any of you ever contact experts? Do you guys ever do that? I oh, don't know. I mean, to me, I make it try to sound right, and then maybe fill in the blanks later with real information if I can. If it doesn't sound right enough. Although, you know, sometimes I just 
try to make it sound right for the universe. Because again, if, if I'm creating my entirely an entirely different universe, I just get to make up whatever I want. I mean, <laughs> what? They're not going to care that. No, I don't think that's really what Griffins use as their currency. <laughs> Like I said, well, I I see see it. it's like the one thing to be sure is if doing some preliminary research can help, but this is a world of magic, and magic is it's magic. So, and I, I did jazz hands for that just so everyone can picture it. But um, it's like when you're dealing with magic, you can define some of the rules, and the only important thing after that is you stick to your own rules. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. yeah, that's true. You can uh, arbitrarily define things like that, but going back to what you said about experts, that's one of the great benefits of this community because you can meet literally anybody. Uh, for example, DGT Davidson is a no kidding archaeologist. Um, you, all these cool people online uh, that you can uh, pull knowledge from. That is really cool. I didn't even think of doing that. Like, that that's, that's a good resource. Yeah, talking to other people is also really good. Now, do we want to do one more, or do we just want to go? We go. We got about 15, well, depending on what we get out, we got about 15 minutes. Yeah, we got about 15 minutes left. Do we want to open the floor? Do you want to open the floor for questions from the audience? Who's got <laughs> questions? Oh yes, we've got questions. All right, you there with, with the beard? You got your head up slightly faster than guy with rainbow dash. Yeah. Oh, that's a dark sided moon shirt. So you can come that's up awesome. and you can use the microphone and you can look into the eyes of people. The dead life was solar size. I know. I repeat it. Yeah, sure. <laughs> What is your question to the panel of knowledge? The what? <laughs> <laughs> what do you do as authors to create characters that the audience can empathize with? So why don't you repeat that question so that people... The, the question was, what do we do as authors to create characters that readers will empathize with? Can I start? Sure. The most important thing is to make them realistic and to make them consistent enough that it makes sense, but, you know, it's fun to to have a round character that sometimes breaks what you're expecting. Um, I don't know if anyone here has read The Sisters Do, but, um, thanks. <laughs> um, I would th it's about Daring Do and Dixie Do, or Derpy, as sisters. And through the course of the story, Dixie becomes a very empathizable character, and Daring Do ever, ever, ever is. <laughs> is quite hateable and but it's the same process you know you you set up expectations and then you break them in one way or another and that either creates a character makes a character lovable or hateable you know so if you set up that this person deserves something good and then it breaks and they don't get it there's tons of empathy there people really care about those characters on the other hand if you show that someone's a jerk and they get lots of rewards then they're a villain Another thing, uh, something I would add to that is um, a uh, a character does usually if you a character develop and to really show the multiple sides of their personality and to become um, relatable, they do need to struggle in the story. If everything's <coughs> and it needs to be balanced, it is, if everything's hunky dory and it's happy day in happy town and all that stuff, your readers are going to get bored and the character's going to seem flat. At the same time, if the only thing they know how to express is brooding. Or, or sparkly, or something like that. <laughs> then, um, then you'll lose people just as fast. It's about seeing. It's like a story should help a uh, a reader see multiple sides of a character, and that usually means them being exposed to multiple situations. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, the the whole character uh, bringing it together as uh, one quality picture, um, creating a character that seems real. Uh, will allow the audience to more easily identify with at least some aspect of their personality. I actually do something where after I've flushed, I've got like history, information, all this jazz, I have a three bullet thing that is my golden rule that I have, why do we like them? What are their flaws and why don't we like them? And what are their hobbies and quirks? And between those three, there's, because they, they all play off of one another. And you, you know, okay, reasons the reader doesn't like this reader, the reason does like them, you know, what are their flaws, you know, what makes them real, and that really helps make a character that, even if they're not a very likable character, the reader is still very interested in. Um, well, you could have them, like, save a puppy. 
Puppies, except when they poop on the rug. <laughs> That's cats. Anyway, um, yeah, I know you have a cat. Um, yeah, I have my cat on my lap, and he's never pooped on the rug. Uh, he's offended. Yeah. Just turn your lap. Yeah. Let's keep it back. We we, we got a time clock. I want to get as many questions. Okay. Um, Sorry, I hate to. Yeah. No, I, I understand. Um, yeah. Um, so something that I. They were talking about with um, making characters well rounded and having them be equivalent there. First off, there's two parts to this. First off, we're writing fan fiction. So we have characters gift wrapped to us. We, when you say, okay, the protagonist is Twilight, automatically several different character traits pop into the head of you know, whoever's reading. We, we know who Twilight is, we know what she's like. Um, so. You're starting from an advantage right off the bat because you know Twilight. We like Twilight. We care about Twilight. So uh, you know that's one part of it. But for OCs, um, I don't know if any of you were there for my human panel an hour ago. Oh God, I hope not. I gave people a uh, challenge for their characters. Um, basically, describe your character without saying what they look like what their role in the story is, uh, what their profession, what their costume is, where they're from, and what their relationship to other characters are. So if I was going to describe Twilight, I wouldn't say, she's Shining Armor's brother, she's a lavender unicorn, she's you know, this and this. I'd instead say, oh, she's a bookworm, she's neurotic, you know, that kind of stuff. You get a much bigger feel for who the character is, and she's seems more real, so you can empathize with it. Let me get another question, and we will try to answer these as quickly as possible. Yes. Okay. What are your writing goals? Are you a just a thousand words a day kind of person, or just whenever you feel like it kind of person? How how what kind of writer are you? <coughs> I do four to six thousand words a day. Good. Good. <coughs> so repeat the question for the. Oh, second. sorry. Yes. The question was, uh, what kind of writer are you? Do you have word goals a day, or do you just write when you feel like it? And yeah, my answer is great. Uh, at this point, I I haven't written for a long time, so none. Oh. <laughs> Um, just whenever I feel like it, although I did just submit a story today. Ooh. You can plug that at the end. That will yeah. be good. Perfect. Excellent. Uh, okay. You guys um, I, I try to at least get in 4,000 or so a week, though it's in different forms and whatnot. And it's like, of course, sometimes that doesn't happen, just especially with the way work's been as of late. But um, it's like... Doing it per week makes it so I can have off days and no days, and then also just days where I chew it all down. Uh, I continue about, uh, consider about 1,500 a day successful. Haven't been doing that a lot lately due to life situation. I mean, I'm not getting paid to write fan fiction, so got to put that on the back burner sometimes. Um, but just keeping your fingers moving, uh, uh, National Novel Writing Month, um, 1,667 words a day is good practice. All right, um, for Totally Not a Brony, uh, I, I've been talking with you, this is David. Uh, I know that you had a really fun experience recently. You want to tell everyone what you did recently that's, um, that's like Wonderbolt status? Um, so if it turns out if you know the right people, um, you can get a ride in a fighter jet, but if you aren't really good with motion sickness, it's not going to go well. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and I'm doom, doom, doom. Like addendum to, to my thing. I write full time for a living, so my answer is kind of insane automatically because I'm an author. I'm automatically nuts. So, questions. <laughs> you, you've been yeah, waiting. This is mostly towards the pen, but uh, exactly how did he come up with uh, past sins and uh, what gave him the characters uh, like Mix and Spell Nexus? Okay, uh, Pat, this one's for you. Uh, how did you come up with past sins, and what gave you ideas for the characters of uh, Nix and Spell Nexus? Uh, well, uh, past sins kind of grew out, the, out of the story that preceded it, which was um, Creeping Darkness. Um, something not a, something that some people do miss is that Nix actually makes her first appearance in that story with a different character portrayal and design. But um, the concept of that, like. Uh, the innocence of Nightmare Moon and what it would take to kind of uh, actually make her a reformed mayor that was beyond taste the rainbow. Um, that's what really drove Pastins and what gave me the inspiration for it. 
as uh, and thus, of course, Nick grew out of that as being kind of the uh, a variation of Nightmare Moon without all the hate, without all the bad memories. Kind of just the the what I what I've come to call and might might actually be the trope name for it of an amnesia reset. And then um, Spell Nexus kind of grew out of the situation of there needing to be the other per the person on the other side of the line, the kind of instigator. But at the same time, not the, just being evil for entirely evil sakes. There was supposed to be some other things beyond that. So, meh. <laughs> All right. Uh, we got we got four minutes. So we have enough. Maybe like two more questions. Hand right. over there. What's the number one worst thing that you could write about? Like, like just avoid. The worst. The thing. worst number one worst thing to write about that you avoid. Oh wow. Well, yeah. We're we talking about on a personal level or fan fiction personal. in general. Yeah. Which, which do you mean? Just writing in general. Uh, just, yeah. yeah, that's interesting. I think that it's important um, to deserve things in writing, like events that, or the way that characters react to things. I think that it needs to be deserved. I don't. I think that it's. Uh, I've had personal experience that it really ruins the audience's. Um, belief in the story and interest in the story when things happen that aren't deserved. Uh, for me, I guess that would be, uh, I guess what you would call schlock, just like something really quick and just for attention. I, don't, I'm not, I know I'm trying to, like, something written specifically to garner all the buttons for attention. Uh, I like stories that have meaning behind them and have some depth. Battery is running low. That's okay, we're almost done. Um. Personal level, I don't mind to talk about the pizza parlor chapter and Princess Celestia gets mad. That is probably my low point. But on a larger level, boring characters. I mean, you can make a really in uh, uh, ridiculous plot, but if you have interesting characters to go along with it, Audiences are a lot more forgiving. That's not to say the story is not as important, or not important at all, but you need to have good characters, and if you write boring and interesting Ooh. characters... Um, something that I think is definitely something that needs to be avoided at all costs is really inconsistent perspective, because <coughs> that can just throw a reader off so quick. It's like, oh, we're following this character around, but suddenly, oh, this character, and then everybody knows everything, but no, I suddenly didn't know about that. It's like the narrator's perspective needs to be fairly consistent through the story, and you need to kind of be fairly stringent with the rules for yourself of, okay, I'm only going to switch perspectives every scene. Or if I may switch perspectives if a character leaves, but then it's just kind of the camera's gravitating to some other person, or I'm going to stick entirely to the third person omniscient, or entirely to the first person. I'm not writing it's, um, totally it's like it's it's something to kind of just get in your head or get used to and develop as a, your own unique writing style. Because once you get it, it's really easy to hold. But before then, that can be something that can really throw readers off. All right, totally. Uh. I Worst thing ever, Mary Sue's. We could probably have an entire pen about this. Oh, dear gosh, yes. Just in brief, for those who don't know, what is a Mary Sue? Well, it depends on who you ask, because I kind of go with Larry Korea in that a Mary Sue is just a poorly written character, otherwise there's no such thing. And that is an instant debate starter right there, because a Mary Sue is, a, is a basically self-insert, can do no wrong, perfect character that nobody likes, except the author. <laughs> yep, that's... Yeah, right, and it, it, that's why we get into... This, like I said, it could be a whole panel worth of debates out of that. But, uh, do you want to we'll do one last question and then we'll, then we'll question. The final. Oh, God, I don't have to choose. All right, well, no. go. We, can, we can pull up them both. Um, what do you, as authors, what do you feel about taking one starting point, one starting scene, or one end goal, and trying to write spontaneously from there? I think that's a great idea. So, pantsing it, basically. Pretty much, just as I say, go with it. Some people do, some people don't. I, I like to make a plan everything. Most writers fall somewhere on that scale. I, yeah, I've heard often the quote that um, if the author isn't surprised while writing the story, the audience is never going to be surprised. So I like to leave gaps <coughs> and to just see what happens based on how well I know the characters. Anyway, um, <laughs> that's the only way I do things. I think of, oh, this would be funny. 
and then just go over there. And dang it. <laughs> to be fair, it's it, a lot of fun. It, it kind of depends on what you're writing. If you're writing something short, like a short story, you don't need to plan as much. If you're doing a 300,000, 400,000 word epic, to make sure you've got an end goal in mind or it can take a while. I, I speak from experience. No, I disagree. Yeah, I, 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 would, I would flip that, actually. Like really? it's it's important to to have like points along a long story that you know it has to go to, but you want to leave things open. Oh yeah, you leave gaps, but you leave. When you have a when going. you have a really short story, it's got to be pretty blocked out, or else it can be very boring. But it has to be very everything has to have a reason. So see, yeah, this is this is just case of yeah, different it's, authors it's a, do completely different things. That's what's so interesting. Is yeah, that like, authors and yet we're both creating cool stuff. <laughs> I've, I've written that style like four or five times, and I've had huge hits. Try both, see what works for you. That's my best. Exactly. I, I just want to recommend there's something in between. In between Panzer and like crazy plan everything out, it's called flashlighting, where you just with a flashlight, I know what's going to be the next few chapters. Yeah. Yeah. Experiment. That, okay, so you, you are our last question, we'll answer with bullet points. Is, do any of you guys write fan fiction for fandoms besides comics? No. Nope. Never <laughs> The end. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. No, no. So I mean, let's take another question then, I guess. We're stalling. Take another question. We'll be right back. What's your preferred. Um, Right Great question. Yeah, that's a really good question. I think it really depends on the story you're trying to tell. You, you I think it's asking your preference, though. You're, you're, are you asking our preferences? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yes, your personal preferences. Yeah, so what I'm saying is it's, it, it really depends on the story you're trying to tell. It depends on, it, like, the how you tell it is going to affect the rest of the story. So I like to write from first person because it gives you such a narrow view of what's happening, and you can really describe things as it's being seen instead of, like, if it's too omniscient, you just know things because you're supposed to know them. The only thing I don't do is second person. Other than that, it's relatively 50-50 for me. Uh, I've done both first person and third person. I prefer third person. So, if you could, <laughs> starting with Penn, and then we'll go to Totally. Uh, if you could give us one, uh, let us uh, tell you who you are, give us one final plug and word of advice, and we'll just go down the line and we will call it good. So, one final word of advice. Um, and plug. Try to, try to get some words down every week just because otherwise you will get rusty. Um, final plug, uh, I guess, read my stories. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, thanks for having me, even though it was just digital in a picture. <laughs> thanks for being here. Uh, I absolutely agree that practice makes perfect. Um, I also endorse it, pushing the boundaries, doing things you've never done before. Uh, that's why in my 92 stories I do have one that's cloth. <laughs> We're not going to talk about that. <laughs> no, the power will mysteriously go out again. <laughs> um, <coughs> piece of advice. Yeah, I guess just work at it. Um, if an idea pops into your head, go for it. I mean, you never know where it's going to end up. Um, Final plug, I guess, is um, any minute now. I've already happened. Um, I submitted a story today, uh, Daggio and Sonata, talking 22 years after the events of Rainbow Rocks. Yeah, so. That. Yeah, I don't have any plug, but uh, final word of advice is just be true to yourself. Be, do, do what feels cool in the moment because you won't get it back. Uh, my final bit of advice? Learn stuff, get out there, uh, get some new experiences. You never know what will give you something that's awesome for a story. Uh, plug, check out my stuff, The Dust Guard Saga. It's adventure and it is amazing. It's totally an epic. Also, you can uh, come get cards if you want to check out my other stuff that I publish. Yeah. One, dr one drink, dead silver. I mean, chupacabra hunting and murder. You don't get much cooler than that. So, this has been the writing panel.